So I'm Shannon Blevins, and I'm the Associate Vice Chancellor for Economic Development and Engagement at UVA WISE, and it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. I was excited to be able to talk to you today about some of the topics that um, are near and dear to um, my heart, and also really critical to economic prosperity for our rural regions. This conference really touches on um, intersections in what we call integrated systems approaches to economic development, community development, as well as partnerships. All of those are required uh, to address our challenges that face our rural regions. Now UVA WISE, University of Virginia's College at WISE, operates at an integrated systems approach level. And in fact, um, one of our strategic partnerships, which is the Appalachian Prosperity Project, we have dozens of different um, initiatives that fall into three categories. They fall into education, economic development, and well-being. Now this Appalachian Prosperity Project is a collaboration between University of Virginia, University of Virginia's College at WISE, and the Virginia COPA Coalition, which is uh, made up of Planning Districts 1 and 2, and we have Jim Baldwin, who is the Executive Director of PDC2, Cumberland Plateau Planning District. I mean, we realize that it is um, our employers require educated and healthy employees. You can't divorce education from health and from the economic, economic situation of your region. Um, it, you have to have all of them in order to be successful. And actually, the University of Virginia's College at WISE, we are organized, our Office of Economic Development and Engagement is organized around this principle. For many years, we were among the very few public liberal arts colleges in the nation that had an economic development office. And now we actually have the Healthy Appalachia Institute, which is a public health institute that is part of our Office of Economic Development. And that's important because structurally, I mean symbolically, but structurally we are organized to include and have our eye on that public health mission. And some of the examples I'll talk about in a little bit give you some idea of how we're incorporating that. But we believe strongly that an integrated systems approach is critical to the success of our region. And where you find those intersections, those, that's the sweet spot. That's where the magic happens. I, I hesitate saying magic because it is really hard work, but that's the sweet spot. So the paradigm really has shifted significantly, especially if you look at economic development. We used to focus on infrastructure, individual projects. We used to focus on um, benchmarking ourselves against other regions. Uh, we were seeking that large industrial operation. That was the ultimate goal. Many of you are nodding your heads. You remember when that was the case. But it has really evolved into evidence-based, innovative thinking that drives and fuels the growth. Um, we now implement the system, integrated systems approach that leverages partnerships. And we have to look at our strengths. We have to look at the place-based, asset-based solutions that really drive growth internally. That's the key to true transformational growth and ensuring that entrepreneurship efforts and building ecosystems that support that internal growth are in place. The paradigm has shifted. And that's why all of the things you heard from the, my fellow panelists this morning and the stories that Earl mentioned earlier, that has the shift in that paradigm have manifested itself into those types of partnerships. That's why we have to do what we do. So why partner? If you look at um, the wicked problems that uh, Roger mentioned earlier, you know, one of the single reasons that leadership across regions fail is that we try to address a technical problem, or an adaptive problem, a wicked problem, with technical solutions. I think in that one lever that you pull will solve a lot of the problems when they're very, very complex. We have, um, when you look at regional prosperity, it requires broader thinking, a different perspective. We um, must involve various partners across the process. The challenges we face are often difficult to identify, they require um, changes in roles, relationships, ways of thinking. They, the solutions need to be identified by people who are closer to the problem, the people who are closer to the work. And that requires numerous changes from across various organizational boundaries. And solutions to those adaptable changes often take time to implement, they're transformative, and they many times take a generation. And in our fast-paced, the accelerated pace of today that instant gratification works against that. 
So that's why it makes regional collaboration and partnership really hard work, but it's the only way to truly have long-term transformational um, change. And it's that co-creation, working across organizations, working across partners to develop something that doesn't already exist. And no one institution truly can go it alone. So the next several slides that I'm going to share with you are going to give just a few examples of those that I happen to be a part of and have been very satisfying, one of the most satisfying um, projects that I've had in my professional career. The first one is Opportunity Southwest Virginia. And the second one is the Clinch River Valley Initiative. Both are multi-year collaborations and have garnered many partners. Uh, the Appalachian Regional Commission are, is also a funder of both of these initiatives. First one, Opportunity Southwest Virginia is a collaboration that's focused on increasing entrepreneurship activity within Southwest Virginia. And it now spans 19 counties. It was initially piloted in the Coalfield region, the seven counties in the city of Norton. Now over four different planning districts, 19 counties, it has a variety of different initiatives. And many of the initiatives um, support local farmers and we also support um, restaurants that source their food from local, uh, local farms. Over 30 organizations participate. Over 350 entrepreneurs have been supported um, and provided resources through this effort. 33 business competitions have launched. And um, the, the thing is, though, before this effort was actually launched, there were 26 organizations doing something in supporting small business and entrepreneurship. None of them were talking. None of them were networking. So this operation that was formed in the summer of 2012 has helped to pull that network together and to co-create several different um, initiatives. The Clinch River Valley Initiative, or what we lovingly call Kirby, is set out to actually build a, build a destination around one of the world's most biodiverse rivers. And it has engaged over 500 people in the six years of its uh, time. And it is actually increasing access to the river, as well as both of these projects have a community development piece. Rally Southwest Virginia is part of the Opportunity Southwest Virginia initiative, and all the communities in Rally Southwest Virginia provided a $3,000 mini grant that will help them be able to find a meaningful and visible project and teach leadership skills woven into the project management. The Hometowns on the Cliffs is actually a community development operation that the towns are able to go through a designation process little hoops they have to jump through, but then they can carry the sign Hometowns of the Clinch and be part of the broader regional promotion activity. And in closing, my last couple slides really focus on an effort that was started in 2016, a broad regional economic development, broader uh, focused effort. It was the Southwest Virginia Economic Forum. What was an event in May of 2016 has turned into a movement bringing 356 people together, those people who love Southwest Virginia. And in fact, those 350 people came from four different states, including Northeast Tennessee, West Virginia, Kentucky. And I think we actually had some D.C. and Pennsylvania folks as well. But when you think about what we were working on, it has spurred seven different action groups working in the area of entrepreneurship, health and wellness, education, youth, as well as um, agricultural and ASD is actually uh, the lead on that action group. So we're working to combine efforts across the multiple different organizations and platforms. So I guess when you think about our wicked problems, our adaptive challenges, you know, the problems that face rural regions are very complex, but that provides us a great opportunity because those opportunities are pretty dynamic. And, um, and it takes all of us working together to make it happen.